I'm here to welcome you to Reignite Church. Now, whether you're new, first time visitor with us, or you've been coming to church here for years, we like to remind everyone every once in a while that we are a church on a mission. We're on a mission to reignite love for God through our authentic worship experience here with you on Sunday mornings. We're here to reignite love for community through our regroups, and we're here to reignite love for all through serving. We are a church that is for everybody. We're multi-ethnic, multi-generational, and we are just a group of Christ followers that believe that we're in this thing called life together. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we thank you for joining us this morning for our service. If you are a first-time visitor with us this morning, a special welcome to you. As you came in, you should have received a Connections card from our Connections table. If you don't mind taking a minute and filling that out and then taking that back to the Connections table after service, we have a nice gift thanking you for spending your Sunday morning here with us. Well, we're very excited here at Reignite because it's a new day, and the Lord has given it to us, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. But also, we've got a brand new song that our praise team is going to be singing for you this morning, and we're kicking off a brand new series. So it is the morning of new, and I believe that God is going to move in our service in a new and fresh way this morning. So let's go ahead and stand. We're going to open up service with prayer, followed by praise and worship, God's word, and then some brief announcements at the end. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for filling our lungs with air, allowing us to wake this morning, Lord God. We do not take that for granted. We pray that you be with us in the midst of our service this morning, moving in and out of the aisles. You were already here waiting for us before we even showed up. But we're here, and your word says, when two or more are gathered, you are in the midst. We are here, and we're ready to feel your presence this morning, Lord God. We're here to lift praises unto you, Lord God. We're here to learn from your word as a body of Christ, Lord. We pray just to feel your presence. We pray that everyone in this room and everyone online, that the distractions in their minds be released in Jesus' name, that we can fix our focus and our eyes on you as we sing praises, and as your word is delivered to us through our pastor, Lord God, let it fall on fertile ground, not on rocks, not on stone, but let it be planted in our hearts and our minds and allow us to be changed people when we leave here. Lord God, we love you. Be with our pastor as he prepares to deliver your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
you know, church, as a team, we've been practicing this song to sing to you for the past few weeks. And this past week, I was reminded of the story of Paul and Silas imprisoned in Acts 16. Is anyone familiar with that story? Well, just in case you're not familiar with it, Paul and Silas were on their way to a place of prayer, and they encountered a slave girl with a spirit. And there's a lot that went down. I definitely guarantee that you should read it. But um, long story short, they called the spirit out of her, and they were eventually imprisoned by the Romans. And as they sat in their dark prison cell, their faith remained strong, and they sang praises and hymns unto the Lord. Even in the midst of their lowest valley, like our new song just said, they praised him. In the midst of their fears, in the midst of their pain from being beaten by the Romans, what did they do? They praised the Lord. Yeah. They lifted his name high. Yes. And in the, this is what's so awesome. In the midst of their praises, God sent an earthquake. He shook the foundation of the church, or of the prison. I'm sorry. He broke their chains and he set all the prisoners free. Yes. Isn't it amazing that we have a God that can break down all the chains? No matter what we're going through, no matter what we've been through, we are not bonded because nothing is too big for the cross. Something else that's truly incredible that God revealed to me in that story was in that prison, not only did God use the praises of his people to shake things up and set them free, but he used their praises to get access to all of the people around them. The, the prisoners, the jailer, the jailer's family, Paul and Silas' praises, they saw them, they saw the Lord, they, they saw the Lord in them, the faith that they had, and they were eventually saved. If you read the, the Bible, you'll, you'll read that. So we just want you to remember, church, that not only will God break through in your life in the midst of your lowest valley, but he will use that valley. He will use those tests to be your testimony, those yeah. trials to be yeah. your testimony. So all you need to do is praise him, give him honor, give him glory, and remember that people around you are watching. So while God is breaking through in you, he's also going to have a breakthrough in those yes. people around you. Amen? Amen? Amen. So let's sing to him this morning, church.
Lord. We don't need anything else in this world, Lord. We may think that we need what the world has to offer, but all we need is you, Lord God. With you by our side, Lord, we can fight any battle that comes against us, Lord. We just thank you for the way that you always protect us. We thank you for the way that you watch over us. We thank you for the way that you always provide for us, Lord God. Thank you for being our healer, Lord. We just thank you for the way that you restore families. You make sick people well, Lord. You make people that are in a pit, Lord, be able to climb out and proclaim your name. We just thank you for all that you are to us. We thank you for your spirit being with us this morning, Lord God. We just ask that you continue to move throughout this service this morning as Pastor Marshall comes and brings your word. We just ask that you give him the words that you have him to say, Lord, and to, to proclaim them the way that you have them to be said, Lord. We just thank you for all that you do, and we thank you for what you're going to do that we haven't even seen yet, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. When we ignite kids, you're dismissed for Kids Church. Amen. Would you smile at someone as you take a seat this morning? Would you smile? Mm. All right. I'm, <clears throat> I'm glad you guys are here this morning and um, you decided to get up and make it to church early. You can either turn on the monitor, you get a lot of feedback off the wall. Somebody help me out with that. Um, I'm glad you were able to be here this morning <clears throat> and uh, get up early in the cold and get here. Unlike some of our family is not here yet, but it's all good. Glad you're here. Um, I'm starting a new series today, and I'm excited about that, and I'll get to that in a minute. But let's open with a word of prayer, okay? Is that right? Yeah. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for an opportunity, Lord, to share it, an opportunity to, to represent you in this moment, Father. But I ask that you will do for your people what only you can do. Would you help us, Lord, as you helped me this week? Would you stretch us like you stretched me this week? Father, would you, would you um, move in our hearts today that we'll never be the same when we leave, Lord? Father, I've studied, but I yet still need your strength. I pray, Lord, but I still need your power. So I thank you for this moment. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. 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 All right, so good morning. <clears throat> good morning. I'm Pastor Marshall, and I thank you guys for being here this morning. Um, you're in the right place at the right time. Tell someone next to you, you're in the right place? Right at the right time. Yes, yes, yes. So this morning I'm excited to talk to you from the stewardship series on favor. Everybody say favor. Favor. That's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about um, how God favors us in three areas. He favors our time. He favors our talents. He favors our, our treasures. And so we're, we're going to have a good time in this series this morning. Um, favor is more... It's more than get someone getting your favorite ice cream and, and, and bringing it to you. Yeah, favor is more than finding a, your favorite parking spot when you need it because you're running late. And so you, you, you're like, Lord, I need a spot. And, and, and someone pulls out a Walmart, the Walmart spot and you, and you get that spot. I, I know that's happened to me yeah. many, many a times. But favor is more than that. That's all good, but favor comes from God. And we recognize that favor must be acknowledged. Favor, that's the two things we have to understand this morning when it comes to favor. Favor must be acknowledged and it must be advertised. Um, one, defini one definition of favor is this. Um, favor is identified as demonstrated delight. Everybody say demonstrated delight. Demonstrated delight. Think about that. When you, when you take delight in something that God has done, Usually you want to advertise it, right? Yeah. You want to tell somebody that God did this for you. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Um, but because favor is cyclical, favor comes from God, it must also go back to God. Yes. I said it's cyclical. It, it starts with God, and then, then it resonates with you, but it must come from him and go back to him. I'll explain that in a minute. So for over the next four week, uh, three weeks, we're going we're gonna to consider how to acknowledge and advertise the favor of God in our lives when it comes to one particular area. So today, I want to give you a moment to uh, think about this very valuable thing we're going to talk to you about today. I want to talk to you about something today that's so viable. If, if, if it's stolen from you, Danielle, that, that, that you know in your life when it's stolen, it can never be recovered again. Yeah. It's so valuable that when it's spent, if it's like currency, when you spend it, it's gone forever. Yeah. I want to talk to you about favor in your 
time. And your time. I'm going to use for a subject today, if I can tag a title to it, I'm going to use for a subject today, give it time. Say give it time. 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 So meet me in Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Ecclesiastes is the masterpiece of wisdom literature. It's, 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 it's written by the wealthiest man at the time. He was also the wisest man at the time. Solomon, King Solomon, he writes this. And, and what, I, what I love about Ecclesiastes is that it, it shows us how real life can be. Y'all, do y'all know your Bible? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Ecclesiastes shows us how real, how real life can be. So Ecclesiastes 3 Verse 1, it'll be on the screen, it says, For everything, there is a season, a time for every activity under heaven, the good and the bad. Amen? Amen. And, and, and it says, verse 2, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to harvest, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to tear down, and a time to build up, a time to cry, and a time to laugh. When you're in a time of crying, you must remember that there's a time of laughter that's going to come yes. right behind that, because everything is cyclical. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. A time to grieve and a time to dance. Oh, man, we all know about the dancing part. Yeah. Mm. But what do we do when it comes to the grieving part? Mm. Uh, come on. There's this, this beautiful book that I discovered when I was in seminary that I shared with people, and we had a lot of grief in our life back home in Oklahoma. And thank you guys for, that, I, that I pinned for prayer, that prayed for my family, going through some stuff back home. We, there, there, there's this... There's this um, beautiful book out called The Grief Recovery Handbook, um, shameless plug. That's something you don't go to heaven without looking at that book, The Grief Recovery Handbook. It helps you understand the process of grief. There's a time to grieve and there's a time to dance. Verse 5, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and there's a time to turn away and be a big girl and stop embracing a time to search and a time to quit searching. A time to keep and a time to throw away. Why do you want to keep everything that God gives you instead of throwing some stuff away? Make room for some things. I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to leave that alone. A time to tear down. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be quiet. And a time to speak. Couples. Get that. There's a time to be quiet. If I can put an X over your mouth. And then there's a time to speak. Some battles are worth fighting, but not every fight should go all the way to, to the end of, the, of destruction. Verse 8, our final verse. A time to love and a time to hate. Really? Mm. Really? We built this church. Our philosophy is, is, is that we love and we demonstrate God's love. We're trying to reignite love, but a time to hate. Is that in the Bible? Is that in your Bible? A time to hate. Don't you know that God hates evil and evil people? People that practice evil, it says that God hates and that God hates that. A time for war and a time for peace. In Psalms 31, 15, David says it this way. David says, my times are in your hands. <laughs> Solomon and David are trying to convince us, church family, that, that conveying a truth happens in your time. <laughs> but your time belongs to him. That's right. Yeah. So, so understand this. I want to teach something. Can I teach? Yeah. Yes. I want to teach something. God doesn't buy time, but he creates time. He, he, uh, let me say it this way. God doesn't go by time. He's outside of time. He's eternal. But he creates time. So, so for that reason, when we give back time, we're giving back something to God. That's already his. Yes. That's right. <laughs> oh man, how important is time? 
It belongs to God and it must go back to God because time is cyclical. And we must be good stewards of our time. Think about this. There's only 1,440 minutes. 1,440 minutes in a day. But the Lord loves you so much, and He loves me so much that He has made He has made each day unique to you to manage it. Come on. Your day is going to look different from my day, and your time is going to be look it's going to look different from my time. You may work, and I may work, but our work may look different mm -hmm. because God loves us so much. He has made each day unique to you. to be a good steward of your time. Because you were created to do good things in his time. Yeah. I'll give you scripture for that. Ephesians 2.10 says, says it like this. Um, but we are God's masterpiece. Do y'all see that? Yeah. yeah, he has created, he has created us anew. Everybody say anew. Anew. Yeah. In Christ Jesus, so that we can do good things He planned for us long ago. We were made to do good things. We were made to do good things for God and before God. I'll say that again. We were made to do good things for God and before God. For Him to see, for Him to view from, the, from a heavenly place, for Him to witness from your holy heart. That means God values your time. <laughs> he values your time. Let me give you examples of this because some of y'all are looking like you got up early this morning in daylight savings time. Um, he values your time like the accountant values bookkeeping, like the developer values programming, like the mother values lunch making. God values your time. That's right. Amen. Yes. That's right. Amen. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Yes. Do I need to start another church? No. Yeah. <laughs> do y'all get the value of time? Yes. yes. Amen. And we're going to do everything for God with our time and before God with our time. Ooh. Colossians 3, 23 says it this way. Whatever you do, work unto the Lord with all your heart as working for the Lord. And working for the Lord. So, Pastor, you, you're trying to tell me I don't, I don't do it for myself? No, you, you, you pick the job, and you've picked her, but everything you do is to give time back to him. Yeah, that's right. As you do it and as you enjoy it. So with every opportunity, church, with every season you seek, we must acknowledge Christ and make him known with our time. With our time. I said, in every season, in every season, no matter where you are, sometimes the season looks difficult. It looks, it looks strange to acknowledge God in certain seasons. But the season where I found myself in, in the Navy before I retired after 22 years of service, I found myself um, retiring as a man of God, a Christian, a believer for a long time, saved at 14, um, messed up a little bit, but God, God managed my mess. But, it, but I found myself retiring, and I thought, Lord, how can I glorify you with my time? Well, I had this pastor friend of mine named Frank Hawkins. He's a pastor. And, and I said, hey, Frank, I want to have a ceremony. I want to have a retirement ceremony at the church. And I want, I, I, I want you to speak on my behalf, brother. I want you to speak. He's like, he's like bro, um, what do you want me to say? What, what, how do you want me to narr narrate the narrative for the moment to have your retirement in the church? That's strange. I said, don't worry about saying anything about me too much. I just want you to make Christ known. It's going to be some praise and it's going to be some worship and, it, and, it, and it's going to be uh, a, 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 a setting where you can just magnify Christ. And so guess what he chose as a passage? Guess what he chose? He chose Ecclesiastes 3 mm. to make Christ known. And to this day when I still run into those friends that's what we talk about. Mm. When I run into those old co-workers in this military populated area, they talk about the chief that had the strange, unique retirement service in the church. Yeah. 
in full military uniform. Mm -hmm. Because the purpose, I, all, although I'm black, although I love my Sooners, the thing I wanted them to know about me the most was that I love Jesus. Yeah. And, I, and I magnified him yeah. with my time. Yeah. Yeah. That's just one example of how to acknowledge Christ. But when you understand the value and the wealth of time, you will naturally run away from anything that pulls you away from acknowledging him yeah, right. with your time. Yeah. 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 So, uh, so, some, someone said this. Someone said, time is free, but it's priceless. I wish I was in the seat. I'd be like, pastor! Yeah. <laughs> My Lord. You, you, so, someone said, time is free, but it's priceless, but there's some more. Um, you can't own it, but you can use it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's good stuff. You might want to write that down. Uh, you can't keep it, but you can spend it. Yeah. And, and, and once you've lost it, you can never get it back. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. You can never get it back. Yeah. Sometimes when studying God's word, I hear music. When, I, when, I, when I'm listening to his word, I'm asking God, well, what does this mean? How can I... How can I how can I apply it to my life, but how can I share it in a way that is applicable to people? So sometimes when I'm reading God's word, when I'm studying his word, I hear music and I, and I, see, and I see videos and I see, I, I see uh, movies from my experience. I'm just talking about from my experience. I don't know how you read the Bible, but when I read the Bible, I hear music. And I see scenes from movies and TV shows and, and life. And so, and so more importantly, music comes to mind. So when I was studying this, I was... And I was looking over the notes and, and, and writing down, give it time. Cindy Lauper came to mind. Cindy Lauper, y'all don't know who she is. Everybody 35 and older may re resonate with, with uh, may relate to Cindy Lauper. She wrote this beautiful uh, melody called Time After Time. And, 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 and it kind of goes something like this. She said, lying in my bed, I hear the clock quick and think of you caught up in circles cyclical confusion is nothing new I'll leave it there I'm in church, I'm in, I'm in church. I don't know about you but the Bible to me the Bible to me uh, relates in that experience that, that, that I can resonate with and I tie it back so I can understand and keep the truth so when I find myself in time after time, situations that I can't manage, I, I have a realness to make the Bible relevant. And yes, I grew up in church. I'm a church boy, mm -hmm. but I still hear music. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I looked up the origin of the song, Time After Time. Is that okay? Can we talk about that now? Yeah. yeah. All right. If you're listening online, you'll be all right. <laughs> Cindy said in an interview when she was pinning the song time after time, she said, when I wrote the song time after time, I had to write it real quick because they needed another song. Her, her, her album was almost ready to be released, but the, but the producer said, we need one more song. And so she wrote time after time real quick. And she said she, she, she was sitting and, and thinking, and she saw this TV guy, 35 and older. Yep. Yep. It was a TV guy that was on your screen. And we still made it to the 21st century. But, we, but anyway, she said she, she was sitting, and she was thinking, and, and she saw this TV guy, and it had a title, Time After Time. And she said, I don't know why, but something just clicked. Something just clicked. And I'm hoping that with this series, as we, as we talk about time, and as we talk about our talents, and as we talk about our, 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 our treasures, that in, in you, something will just click. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That when you find yourself in situations that, that may be a little strange, when you find yourself doing life and things get a little arduous, that you will understand that, that you can make it yeah. time after time. Yes. 
and that you will acknowledge and advertise God on a daily, on a daily basis. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you. To help you do that, I want to give you three ways to help you make the most of your time. Three ways. And we're out of here. The first way to help you make the most of your time. Everybody say, oh me. Because oh, I know it's on the screen. <laughs> Give your body the sleep it needs. Man, man. When I, when I tell you sometimes when I'm studying, God slaps me and I come in here with the fingerprint marks on my face and then I have to share it with you what God has shared with me. That one got me. That one got me. That one got me. Give your body the sleep it needs. Notice I didn't say the sleep it wants. But the sleep it needs. Uh, and so what, what Pastor's trying to tell you, family, is that there's times that you have to you have to sit down and find out in, in your in your life what is the sleep that I need? How much sleep do I need? You might want eight hours, I might want twelve hours. Come on. <laughs> is it realistic? Come on. <laughs> but what I need, I need it, what I need is five to six yep. to function. Yep. Five to six. And when I find myself short, because I'm, a, because I'm a night owl, when I find myself short on the short end of that spectrum, I say something like this to God. I say, God, the time is yours. Yeah. Help my sleep, <laughs> however much it may be, be enough. Yeah. And I call my yeah. Church, you got to know how much sleep you need. That's right. If you're going to manage your time That's right. wisely. Yeah. Yeah. So last year, or yeah, last year, I was invited to a youth camp. Never spoke at a youth camp before. Spoke to some children here and there. Never spoke every day to youth. Last year, I found myself at a youth camp. But the problem was, I didn't really know what I was doing. I didn't want to make it too deep. I didn't want to get make it you know over their head. I, I wanted to relate to them on a regular basis. So everything that I, I I I started, I had to scrap. And I found myself each day because at youth camp you speak every day. I found myself each day getting up early, earlier than I would normally get up. And I would write down my thoughts. And I would thumb through my phone, which I have my Bible on my phone. I would thumb through my phone and I would ask God, what do you want me to share? This is where I'm thinking about going, but how do you want me to share it? And what I found that in the, in the morning hours of the day is my most creative time to think and time to strategize. And you have to manage how much sleep do you need and when are you most creative and when, are you, when, do, you, when do you think more productively? You have to manage that. God has made each day unique to you. He says, I'm going to give you a gift of time. However long that may be, manage it. So if you, even if you're a night owl like me, you can find out how much sleep you need to manage the most of your time so your body can rest and function the next day efficiently. Second thing, I want to give you exercise your mind along with your body. Some of y'all do really good with exercising that body. Praise God for that body. When I look at my body, ooh, Jesus. Praise <laughs> God for that body. Amen. But what about your mind? Yeah. What about your mind? Don't be a beautiful body with a terrible mind. Ooh, that's right. Come on. Yeah, let's go. Beautiful body with a maxed out mind. Mm. Mannequins <laughs> look nice. <sighs> mm, mm, mm. Mm. But nobody no. wants to talk to them. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> from, from, from time to time, from time to time, we need to read something. We need to read something. Um, and the focus of our reading sometimes should be Bible. Yeah, that's right. Because that's the only thing the Holy Spirit is obligated to use yes. in our lives. Yes. 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 Wow, wow. Um, 
there's a there's a nice free app on the U version. If if you go to the app store and download U version, there's a free app where you can get the Bible on there. The beauty of that is it was made free to us, and you can have different translations. You can have different um, uh, reading plans to help you maximize your reading, so that you can stretch your mind. Um, and then if you have those uh, if you have uh, those kind of jobs where your commute is pretty pretty long, get one of those audio books. Get an audio book and read as you go home. As you traverse through your through your day, put on an audio book. Again, what are you doing? You're, you're stretching your mind, you're stretching your thinking. Um, the Bible says bodily exercise profiteth little, that's King James. It profiteth little, but godliness profits this life and the one to come. And so we don't we, we can we can sit there and do all lift all the weights we want, we can run all we want, but if you don't exercise your mind, leaders are readers. Yes. Yes. And if you're a Christian, you're a leader. Yes. You represent the kingdom. You have something to talk about everywhere you go. Yes. So exercise your mind along with your body. Thirdly, thirdly. Pray about what matters most. Church, you can't pray about everything. The reason why you don't pray enough is because you're trying to pray about everything. But whether you pray in the morning or you pray in the evening, whether you pray at lunch, whatever, you can't pray about everything. So, so this is what I want you to do. Pastors give you permission to, to focus on how God has blessed your day. Praise, praise him for the day. Praise him for what he's done. Praise him for what you expect him to do. Praise him for what you've seen him do, how you've seen him move in others, how you've heard someone encouraged and healed and someone motivated to keep their marriage, how, you, how you've seen God move. In these crazy times. Yes. Yes. And here's what I found. Here's what I found. When you're, when you're willing to do that, when you're willing to praise him, acknowledge him, and place things in his hands, yes. you focus on the good. Yes. And it changes your perspective. Yes. Yes. That's right. And what we need in Virginia Beach and in North Carolina, what we need is people. We need people who have changed perspectives. Yes. Yes. That's right. Yes. That's right. And they have a godly perspective now. Yes. Because Ephesians 5.10 said that we're his masterpiece. And he made us anew in Christ Jesus. Not anew in the Bonet family. Not anew in the Smith family. Anew in Christ Jesus. So we need a positive perspective, and that's important for a Christian. Sure, I can hear you now, I can hear you now. But pastor, <laughs> there's been times I wanted to cry. There will always be times you're gonna to wanna to cry. Can I tell you that? There will always be times. Just because you're saved and sanctified, filled with the Spirit of God, love Him, and everybody knows you're a positive girl, you're a positive guy, there's going to be times you're going to still want to cry. There's going to be times you want to cry, but that time, the cry won't last long, yes, because there's yes. going to be time because it's cyclical. Time is cyclical. It's going to be time to laugh, too. Yes, That's right. right. Yes. Hold on to the time to laugh comes back around. Y'all yes. yes. hear me in the booth? That's right. yes. Hold on to the time to laugh comes back around. Yes. There's going to be a time to grieve. There's going to be a time to grieve. Time to mourn. Time to be sad. But there's going to be a time to quick walk to and dance. Hold on. Hold on. Until there's a time to dance. And then when you dance, pastor's going to dance with you. I'm going to dance with you. Find, find people in your circle who's willing to dance. Not just willing to mourn with you. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. Family, because life is cyclical, we can continuously demonstrate delight in Jesus when the day is bad and when the day is good. Yeah. 
so that so that when nothing's happening, everything's happening. <laughs> um, we want to we want to celebrate when things are bad. Celebrate Christ that we're in Christ in time, and we celebrate Christ because things are going bad. Celebrate Christ when things are going good. Um, when when nothing's happening and when things are going on, when you got it going on, you're still in Him. You're still in Him. Um, because this, I'm gonna give you this little nugget. You wanna write this down? You might wanna write this down. It was God's plan all along. It was God's plan all along that we would delight in Him, that we would delight in Him as He dwells with us. So that when we dwell with Him, He would delight in us. I'll give that to you again. That's so good. That's so good. I highlight it for myself. It was God's plan all along for creation, for you, for me, that we would delight in Him as He dwells in us, with us. So that we would dwell with him as he delights in us. It's cyclical. In Galatians 4, it says, and he did this in the fullness of time. When the time was right, Jesus came to manifest himself for us. He came to present himself for us. You became the work, the workmanship that his masterpiece. In the fullness of time, when the time is right, when you're, if you're waiting on someone to, to, to come to Christ to be saved right now, you keep waiting because your time of crying, your time of grieving is going to turn to a time of, of, of dancing, a, a time of laughing. But, but, but understand, in the fullness of time, when time is right, you can't control the time. You just manage it. You just manage it. But in the fullness of time, God's going to reveal himself. And those that we're praying for. But you've got to be a steward yes. of the time. Mm. Of the time. When we're a steward of the time, we're able to manage the most of our life. <clears throat> so all you got to do, church, back to my title, is give it time. Give it time. Nothing happens overnight. But the best way to part what pulls at you, what tries to separate you from God and from the love of God, the best way to part with it is to place it in his hands. Lord, you may be a steward. Steward owns nothing, but he manages what's been placed in his hands. And God is saying, I'm going to give you time, Marshall. I'm going to give you time, Maria. I'm going to give you time, Sherry. I'm going to give you time, Pernell. I'm going to give you time, Eugene. I'm going to give you time, Dale. Uh, George, I'm going to give you time, Mary Lou. I'm going to give you time. I'm going to give you time. Then he's going to say, now give it back. That's, that's, that's what we need to be preparing about right there. Because God said, I'm going to give you time to be yours, unique to you. I'm just going to require you to give it back. Give it back. Turn to someone next to you and say, give it back. Give it back. Turn to the other person and say, give it back. Give it back. Amen. Amen. Place it in his hands. So I'm going to ask you to do something right now for me. Will you do it? Yeah. Sure. Two of you, will you do it? Yeah. I'm going to ask you to come give it to Jesus. Would you stand with me? Everybody has something. Everybody has something that they need to give back to God because it's, it's, it's pulled at your time. And, and how do you know, Pastor, how do I know if there's something I need to give back because it pulls at my time? How do, how do I know that I need to place something in his hands so, I, so I'm able to give back to him? Um, how do I know it? I will tell you this. You spend the majority of your time consumed by it. So, so you're working for him and you're serving him, but he doesn't have you. You're calling people and thanking them and praising them and doing all these things, but he doesn't have you. Because you're consumed by it. Being successful, making more money, 
Go, going to places, making people love you and favor you. And, we're, and really, he doesn't have your heart. When they see you, they see Marshall. Yeah. They don't see Jesus because you haven't given Jesus that time. Mm -hmm. And you're mishandling the day. Mm -hmm. how, do, how do I know I have something to place in his hands? If it pulls at your time, what consumes you? That's how you know. If you have something to come up here and give back to him. And I had to do that this week. I had to do that. I, had, I, I did that years ago in my marriage. We're celebrating 30 years. Y'all hear me say this from time to time. That's my testimony because I was all about self. I was consumed with self, working out, and consumed with trying to, trying to please these friends and those friends. And I, I almost lost everything. I almost lost it all. And God reminded me this week, don't be so caught up in trying to grow this young church and so caught up in visiting this person and visiting that person and texting this person back. And have you watched this video, Pastor? Pastor can't watch all. Let me say this. I can't watch all the videos y'all send to me. <laughs> I love you, but I got to manage this time. This week I got convicted. I got convicted about spending more time with him. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But I was convicted because I was consumed by the church. Yeah. Yeah. So what do, you, what do you have to place back in his hand? What consumes you? the most. Are you his? Everything we have, we must hand over in faith. And so with that, and with that being said, I want every eye, every eye closed, every head bowed, and I want to ask you, church family, I love you. I love you. But if you're going to represent him properly, First thing people should see is him, not you. And if there's something you're trying to do in your own strength, it's going to burn you out. You're not going to, you're not going to be able to stay the course because you need to start with him. He doesn't, he doesn't favor me because I'm a pastor. He's still stingy like that. God, God's name is Jealous. Capital J, it says in the Old Testament. His name is Jealous, and he won't, he won't be rival to anything. My schedule, your schedule. He's going to want time with you. Yeah, that's right. He's a jealous God. Yes. So with every head bowed, every eye closed, first call is, I'm going to ask you up here at these lights, is there is our makeshift altar? Is there something on your heart that's consuming you, that's pulling at you, that you need to place in his hands? The altar's open. Would you come? The altar's open. Your pastor did it first. Amen. Thanks for being obedient. Amen. 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 God said, I want time. I want time. I gave it. Now you got to give it back. I want time. I want time. I want time. I don't want your money. I want your time. I want you. I want your time. I want your time. Come up here. Amen. Thanks for being obedient, everyone. Come up here and give it back to him. God, I give you my time. I give you my time. I give you my time. Amen. Amen. God, I give you my time. I'm going to ask you to be in the spirit of prayer right now. Be in the spirit of prayer. Because these are doing business right here. They're doing business with the king. They know the author and finisher of, of all time. God is the progenitor of time. He's the originator. He's the master. They're giving something back to him. Give it back, church. Give it back. Amen. 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 Father, do what only you can do. Help us not to mishandle what you've given us. Be good stewards of it. Father, I thank you. In your name, we say all these things. Second call and last call. Last call. I wonder, is there anybody, maybe you're up here praying and you feel convicted, but is there anybody who does not know Jesus Christ? There's a thing we like to do from time to time. We like to, we like to collectively pray, not to embarrass anybody, but we like to collectively pray. But I want you to take the moment, I want you to take a moment and pray, not just pastor pray, but I want us all to pray that, that God will hear our prayer and he would answer it if we want to give our heart to Christ today. So with every head bowed, every eye closed, I want us all praying this. Lord, 
Forgive me of my sins. I believe on your son, Jesus Christ. That he came to give me more time with you. Forgive me for mishandling my time. Lord, I make you my Lord and Savior. Record my name in the book of life. And I thank you for forgiving me for my sins. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that for the first time, you've just made the transition of your time, which is eternal, to be his. Eternally his. Eternally his. And what I want you to do... I want you to let me know after service. We have some, uh, a beautiful gift for you. Whether you're out here in the audience or if you're up here at the altar and you're praying, I want you to, I want you to let me know. Let Pastor know. If you made that, if you made that confession that, that Jesus, I give you my heart. I don't understand it all, but I've given you my heart. And this was your first time saying this. You meant it. I want to give you something to acknowledge it. So with every, everyone <clears throat> continue to pray, we're just going to take a moment and let them do their business. I'm not going to rush God here. I'm not going to rush him. I'm going to let them, let them do their business. This is his time. When people are praying, that's his time. And everybody knows what's consuming you, what's pulling at you. Everyone knows what they need to get back to him. Keep praying, family. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the obedience, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the obedience. Lord, speak and touch. Lord, speak and touch. Speak and touch. Lord, thank you for the obedience, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the obedience. We love you, Lord. We thank you. Thank you for the obedience. Thank you for the obedience. To give it back to you. Give it back to you. Thank you, Father.